What's up, AppSheet Training subscribers? Thanks for tuning in. Today, we're gonna to meet with Cam. He's gonna to explain to you how to use slices in AppSheet. Let's get started. So if I go over to data and then slices, we see that we have a slice right here called my timesheets. Real quickly to explain what a, a slice is, it is a segment of your table that passes a yes, no filter. So if we are doing a, some sort of like CRM and we only want to have a slice or a view that is displaying data of active, active projects, then we would want a slice that is taking that full table of projects and cutting it down to only the projects that are active, meaning status equals in progress, let's say. And so the row filter condition would be the status column equals in progress. All right, so in this example, the yes, no condition that we want is to see if the employee ID is equal to the user email. User email is a function that returns the email of the person who's currently logged into this AppSheet instance. Employee ID right here is the key column of a table. This is the column inside of timesheets that says who is the owner of this timesheet. So to put those two things together, we're seeing if the owner of the timesheet, which is an email, is equal to the email of the person who's using the app, meaning the person who's using the app will own all the timesheets inside of this specific slice. So let's go ahead and type that out. So with AppSheet Toolbox right here, we can start typing it in and say employee ID. And we can see inside of right here that we have an option for the timesheet table that is a reference to the employee ID. And if we click right there, we now have it auto-filled for us. Now we want to compare. Um, this equal sign is a comparison. It checks if the first value is equal to the second value. Pretty, pretty clear. And so we want to use that other function that we mentioned, which is the user email. And so what this is doing right here is it's checking if the owner of the timesheet is in fact the person using the app. So if we go ahead and hit save and we save this, we should not have any errors and we should be good to go on to the next one. All right, this, this next one Austin has set up to be one more level of complexity. This uses an AND function and an AND function works just like how you would use the word AND in human speak. So I can only go to the movie theater if I have the money and if I have the time to go. If one of those things aren't true, that means I can't go to the movie theater. So if I don't have the money, I can't go, even if I have the time. But even if I have the money and I don't have the time, I still can't go. So if one of them are false, then the whole and returns false. It requires both of them to be true. So in this instance right here, not only are we checking if the time card's employee ID, if the owner is the current user, but we're also checking if the week num is equal to the week num of now. So the now function returns the current date time of the device that is being used. So if the device is being used right here in Texas right now, then it would return 1014 on uh, March 17th of 2022. And then week num, it takes that date or takes that date time and then turns the um, date time into a number. So if it's, it's the, the number of where the week falls within this year. So if it's January 1st, it's gonna be a week num of one. If it's December 31st or December 30th, let's say, it's going to return 52 because that day belongs to the 52nd week of the year. And so what we're checking is if this time card was created in the same week that we are currently in while we're using this device. So let's go ahead 
and build that out. So this is for the My Time Cards. We want to add a custom expression. And so we wanted to start it off with an AND function. And to just keep it clean, I'm going to go ahead and add some spacing in between. If your editor does not look like this, you can download our Chrome extension. At, um, it's called App Sheet Toolbox. Um, it allows you to have a little bit more code-esque environment to work in for your expressions. It adds additional formatting and color coding based off of what type of string it is. So we had the and function right here. And the first one was that we wanted to make sure that the employee ID is in fact the user email, that the person using the app is the owner. And so the way you use the and function is you want to have the and function you want to have a single yes, no. And then you want to add a comma to separate the first and second one. And so with the and function, you can add two or you can add 30 different conditions inside of it. Just you need to know if one of them returns false, the and returns false. If all of them return true, then the and returns true. So the second thing that we're checking is if the weak num is equal to the weak num of now. So we type in week num for the time card. And we confirm that the week num of the current date time, which is now. So if both these are true, it's going to show up in the view that we are creating. Let's go ahead and hit save. And then I'll hit save right here as well, just to make sure there's no red, red dots. It's given us no errors. All right, so Austin has one more level of complexity for us. So this is an and, and like I said, with an and, you can have a minimum of two different conditions, but you can also have a, a hundred if you want to. Um, it might slow it down depending on how complex those expressions are, each of those individual conditions. But this last one right here is going to check if the is blank, if the timeout column is blank. So these time cards, they're clocking in and then they're clocking out. And we can tell if the time card is active if they have not clocked out of that time card yet. So if they clocked in and it has not clocked out, that means they are currently working on it. Meaning in this wording that it's an active time card. So let's go ahead and let's go ahead and copy that last um, expression we had and let's add that third condition. So now when I go to my active time cards, I can go to the row filter condition and real quickly, I can just paste it over just like that. And then we can add that third condition. And it was checking that the um, timeout is blank. The is blank function looks at a value, and if it's blank, it returns true. If it is not blank, then it returns false. Um, there's a counterpart to the is blank function, which is the is not blank. This returns the complete opposite, the um, flipped logic, the flipped um, behavior. And so is not blank would return true if it is not blank and false if it was blank. All right, so now we have this third slice created, which is how um, we know if a time card is not only ours, but it's also ours from this week. And last but not least, that it has not been clocked out yet. So let's go ahead and hit save. Thanks for watching our video today. If you enjoyed this content, make sure to give it a like and subscribe and ring the bell for notifications. We'll have weekly webinars every Thursday at 10 a.m., so make sure to sign up at appsheetraining.com webinars. We'll see you there.